this might be a bit of a bold statement, but everyone working in tech or really just anyone who enjoys technology, I think needs a NAS. I have two of them alone in my office and I actually have a third one on the way. Now, I know when most people think of a NAS, they think network attached storage. This is a dumb place to store files and that's it. But the modern NAS is, NAS is? A, a modern NAS is so much more. And in today's video, we're gonna be unboxing the Disk Station 923 Plus and go through some of the basic features. So stay tuned because we're about to get nasty. By the end of this video, I hope you see why a NAS is such a powerful tool and you will see why you need one too. With the newer all-in-one NAS units, you are basically buying a full-fledged super compact computer that is stripped away of all the unnecessary stuff you don't need in regards to storing data. This here is the latest offering from Synology. It is the DS923 Plus. This thing is a powerhouse. In this tiny package, it has room for 10 gigabit ethernet four hard drive bays in the front and dual NVMe slots and the Synology OS that enables a suite full of functionality. The drives are mounted toolless, making the installation quick and easy. For demonstration purposes, I'm just tossing in a few drives I have laying around just to get this thing spun up and show you guys what it's all capable of. Now turning this over, you can see the two access panels for the NVMe drives, also toolless installation for quick and easy use. If you're interested in picking up one of these units, I've actually put the link down in the description where you can go pick this one up off of Amazon. It is seriously a great deal. So the first thing we're gonna look at quickly, of course, is data backup, because this is the most common use after all. Oh. Now, don't worry, we're gonna get to the fun stuff soon. So the one, two, three principle of data protection states that you should have at least three copies of your data in at least two different storage mediums, and one of them should be in a physically different location. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, well, I can just use like Google Drive or even your preferred cloud platform for this. And yes, while you can do this in a lot of bigger corporations might have some solution like this in place take it from me depending on the amount of files you have and the amount of files you have normally only can grow over time it becomes a quite costly option and keep in mind this isn't just a one-time thing this is a reoccurring cost so the number one reason why you need a NAS is not only to keep your data safe but it can actually save you money on cloud subscriptions that is unless you're super paranoid like me and not only have a copy of your data on your local NAS it's also backed up in the cloud so the first thing we're gonna do is set up the Synology Assistant to help us find and configure our NAS. So on Synology's website, we're gonna go ahead and click on support and then go to download center. From there, we're gonna select NAS. And then from there, we're gonna enter our model number for our NAS that we have. So on this one, we have the DS923+. plus. So when we first come to the page, it's gonna bring us to operating systems. Uh, we can go ahead and click on the tab that says desktop utilities. You can see the very first option here is Synology Assistant. And uh, you can download for whatever operating system you're using. Uh, here we are using Windows, so we're going to go ahead and download the version for Windows. Once it's done downloading, go ahead and go through the setup and installation process. It's pretty well self-explanatory. One thing you'll want to make sure and do is if you have Windows Defender Firewall, you need to make sure and allow the Synology program access through the firewall. So go ahead and click Allow Access. Now, one really interesting thing you'll see here is if you look at our status, it says Migrate. I actually had these drives previously in a DS920 Plus before I installed them in here. And I just removed the drives and reinstalled them into this Synology. And it recognized that they were actually already in a Synology. So if I wanted to, I could just click Migrate and it would walk me through the process of migrating those drives and the data over to this new Synology. Now, I'm going to go ahead and factory reset this and set it up as if everything was brand new that way we can walk through the process together so we just did a factory reset on on it so you can see what it's going to look like when you first set up your nas you're going to have a status of not installed which means just nothing is set up on it your drives are installed but the operating system is not ready to go so let's go ahead and click on this and then we'll click connect we'll blindly accept the eula and we get to the screens that says welcome set up your synology ds 923 plus now we're going to click install. I'm going to select automatically download and install the latest from Synology's website. This is a warning that all, 
All data in drives two, three, and four will be deleted. This action is irreversible. I don't have a drive set in number one, so otherwise you'd see number one there. So we're gonna go ahead and I understand that and continue. And what it's gonna do now, is it's gonna install this, man, uh, this station manager, DSM. It's gonna partition format and partition the drives and get them all set up and ready to go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select automatically install DCM and package updates. But by all means, depending on the type of environment you're using this in, that might not be the best option for you. All right, you can create, you can sign in or create a Synology account to receive more benefits. We're just going to skip that for demonstration purposes. So the very first thing you want to do once you set up your Synology is to go ahead and create storage pool and volume. So we're going to go ahead and click create now. As this is super simple. They have a wizard that's going to take you through it. You select your RAID types. Since I only have three drives in there, um, I'm just going to go ahead and select RAID 5. Gives us a a drive fault tolerance of one. We can lose one drive. And then it gives you an option to put a storage pool description. I'm not gonna put one in. We're gonna go ahead and click next. We're gonna select all the drives in this. Click next. Now this warning here is just saying that these drives are not on the Synology products compatibility list. These are just Western digital drives that I had laying around. And it looks like, uh, Drive two might even contain some bad sectors, but like I said, this is just for demonstration purposes only. So we're just gonna go ahead and continue through that. <laughs> we want the max storage size. I'm gonna click next. And then we're just gonna click next and apply on through. Yes, we know the data is gonna be erased. Once that's all done, you'll come to this screen right here. This is storage pool one. So now that we have set up our storage pool, you're not quite ready to start backing up your data. What we need to do is create a data share. So we're gonna go into our control panel, share folder. We're gonna click create, and we're gonna create a share folder. Then we're gonna name this. For this purposes, we're just gonna call this test. No description, it's gonna go in on our volume one, and we're just gonna leave all the other settings selected and click next. Uh, we're not gonna go ahead and create, encrypt this file this time. We're just gonna click next and next. And there we go, we have our test share created. So now we can actually start backing up data. Now within Windows, you could actually manually map to this and set up like a Windows backup to back up your data to this location. But what we're gonna actually use is a service from Synology uh, to automatically back up your data to your NAS. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and go to the package center. Again, blindly agree to their terms. What we're gonna look for is and we're going to go ahead and look for the synology drive server we're going to go ahead and get that installed now there is some dependencies that's going to install along with that so while this is also working we're going to need the desktop client from synology's website we're going to go back to synology's website go to their download section we're going to download the synology drive client and since we're running on windows we're going to download the version for windows so once everything's installed, you can go ahead and open up the Synology Drive server. You can see that share we created earlier test. We're gonna go ahead and enable that. And then you can set these settings however is appropriate for you. We're just gonna leave them with the default and click okay. So now everything on the Synology site is ready to go. So we can go to our desktop program, enter all our credentials. I'm assuming everything got set up correctly. You will be greeted with this screen. We can either do a sync task or backup. We're just purely doing backup right now. So backing up everything to our NAS. Now you definitely can back up your entire C drive or your entire operating system, but honestly, there's a lot of junk files in there that you really don't need backed up. You really should just focus on backing up your crucial documents, like your documents, your photos, your videos, those things that are irreplaceable. Don't really worry about your operating system files because Likely you're gonna have to reinstall those anyway. So so for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and click my documents, my music, pictures, and videos, and click next. Then we're gonna select our backup destination, which you can see all we have is the test share we created. So we're gonna click okay there, click next. We're gonna do a continuous backup. So it's constantly backing up everything and done. And it is as simple as that. Now we have an active backup solution going to our Synology NAS. Okay, now to dive in for more fun uses for a NAS.
There's a bunch of different software you can download for your Synology. You can run surveillance software and create your own MVR for security cameras. You can set up your own hypervisor and spin up virtual computers and servers. And I don't know, building your own home lab so you can study for your IT certifications? That sounds like a really good reason to buy a NAS. And to do this, it is super quick and simple. Let's actually spin one up right now. So from the package center, we're gonna look for the virtual machine manager and we're gonna go ahead and install that. With that, we're gonna also need to install the replication service. Okay, so once that's installed, you're gonna go ahead and click open. We're gonna be storing these on our one volume we've created. All right, and now we have created our cluster so we can go ahead and start creating our virtual machines. So you can see we have one host, but no virtual machines. Let's go ahead and create our first virtual machine. First, you go ahead and click over here on the side menu, virtual machines, and then we'll go ahead and go to create. For this, let's go ahead and create a Linux machine. Click next. Our storage is gonna be on our basic NAS storage right here. The name of this is gonna be Text Linux. We're gonna give it one CPU, one gig of memory. There's just a standard graphics card. And we're gonna just give it a normal priority. Virtual disk, let's go ahead and assign, we're gonna give this 31 gigs of space. We're going to use the default virtual VM network. And from here, you could actually browse and mount a ISO image. I don't currently have one, so I'm just going to leave it unmounted. But this is where you would put your ISO file so you could actually boot up. And then click Next. You can go ahead and create local users. So we're going to go ahead and allow Bearded. And done. Now I'm creating a virtual machine. You can see it really takes no time at all, and our VM is created. Now we can go through the steps and power it on and actually install Linux and have a complete virtual machine running off of this. Look at all the applications and things you can do with these. Now there is so many other packages you can install. You have Active Backup for Google, where this will actually synchronize with your Google accounts, your Google Drives, and actually back them up locally. You can install antivirus softwares, Active Backup for Microsoft 365. You can spin up your own DHCP server or DNS server. You can create your own mail server. These are just the programs and stuff that's included with Synology. There is tons of different use cases and applications for these Synology NASs out there. Now, if you're looking to purchase something for that tech person in your life, I definitely recommend checking out this video on screen where we talk about some of the best items out there to gift. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit different and we're trying to mix things up here on the channel. So if you'd like to see this video and like to see more videos like this, please let us know down in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed and until next time, keep learning.